guys, welcome to another Jonesy for Film Review. Today I'm going to be looking at the horror thriller 30 Days of Night. Um, it's actually a perfect time to watch this because the winter setting makes me feel really cool, makes me feel really cold, gives me shivers, and uh, it is really stinking hot out today. So this is actually like the perfect movie to watch. Um, I love this movie, I've seen this movie I don't know how many times. Um, I love the concept of it. I love the um, the acting, the the horror element to it, the whole like thriller, claustrophobic mentality of it. So I'm really excited to give this one another look, um, make sure that it still holds up. And uh, so yeah, like as always, I'm going to uh, throw the movie on and I'll let you know my opinion on it when it's over. So the movie just ended, and as expected, I still enjoyed this movie. Um, so the premise of uh, 30 Days of Night is um, there's an Alaskan town, it's the northernmost point of the United States, and they hit this period of going through a month of night. Um, as the title suggests, they go through 30 days of night. And on the last day of sun, this mysterious stranger shows up to town and starts sabotaging certain things. He starts, um, he destroys cell phones, he shuts off the electricity, um, and he just kind of like paves the way for this group of vampires to essentially take over the town for the month, and they just start feeding. And the film follows the small group of survivors that are left um, trying to outlast the vampire attack and make it to that first day of sun. So, the thing that I appreciate the most about this film is that it is a very claustrophobic thriller at its core. Um, yes, it's still identifiable as a horror film because of the whole vampire thing, and there's obviously like a ton of gore and blood and violence and stuff that kind of add to that whole horror element, but there is, at its core, a thriller base to this film. Because the majority of the film takes place with these people locked in specific rooms and trying to make it from one point of the town to the furthest point of the town where they can fully like secure themselves and wait out the, the remainder of the month. Um, so there's a, there's a part that takes place in an attic, there's a part that takes place in the general store, and it's just them kind of hunkering down and just trying to outlast these vampires. And then of course there's your typical like action horror style stuff. So there's a lot of like vampires getting slaughtered. There's a lot of there's a lot of humans getting slaughtered, um, and that's kind of the the balance of the movie. It goes from these like over the top gory moments of like a horror movie to these more quiet, tension filled, do we make a sound or not kind of scenes. Now the actors involved here are people that I relatively like. Um, Josh Hartnett. Um, He's not one of my favorite actors, but he is in my favorite movie of all time, Lucky Number 11. Um, and he gives a good job here, but it's really funny because his first scene, um, he plays the, the sheriff of the town, and he's kind of the leader of the small group of survivors. And the first scene that you see him in, he's given this kind of hardened, gruff kind of performance, and he's kind of talking like this, and he just kind of gave off this, like, element that like he was he was out of his element he kind of gives off this performance that would be more suited for an older actor like Sam Elliott or Jeff Bridges because he's the sheriff of the town thankfully as the movie progresses that really does fade away but that initial scene is like is he I don't remember this but does he play the whole movie as this like gruff kind of character and should they have gotten somebody a little bit older than him to play it but he does manage to pull through. He, he gives a uh, convincing performance. Also giving a convincing performance is uh, Danny Houston, who plays the uh, the main leader of the vampires. And uh, he's not given a whole lot to work with. He's speaking a different language, which was completely made up for this film, for the vampires. He, but he gives a lot of blank stares, and he's got a lot of... He's got, like, this kind of, like era of mystery as he walks around and he's very threatening seeming even though he doesn't really do a whole lot. He, he has a very intimidating 
presence. But I think the best actor in this by far is um, Ben Foster. I love Ben Foster. I've loved him in everything I've seen him in. He is a phenomenal actor and he is an incredibly underappreciated actor in my opinion. I know there are a few other people that have the same opinion, but he just did not get the recognition that I feel that he deserves. He is a fantastic actor. He was in a ton of films in the late 2000s, early 2010s. I think he's kind of disappeared now. I haven't seen him in something very recent, in anything recently, but the guy is a tremendous actor. He gives this great performance. He plays the stranger that kind of sets things up for the vampires to invade, and he just has this very creepy um, vibe to him, and he's just, he gives this great performance, and I'm really saddened that he does not get enough recognition for his great performances. Uh, going back to um, the whole vampire thing, they do speak a different language, which I also thought was very interesting and a very nice change of pace. Um, these vampires have clearly been around for centuries. They've gone through multiple different um, eras and different um, modernizations and stuff. So they clearly would, they are clearly more ancient lack of a better term um, so they would have their own dialect that is probably fa that it would have definitely faded out and be more just for them and I like that they add that element because a lot of these movies you know the vampires adapt with time and they adapt whatever language they happen to be in but these guys are very set in their ways and I kind of liked that also going along with the vampires and things that I liked um, I like how there's not a lot of backstory there could have been a gratuitously over an exposition scene involving somebody finding like some relic book and discovering you know what where the origins of the vampires were and where they came from and there's none of that these things are very the their past their backstory is kept to a very very minimum explanation and it's kind of inferred and it's kind of ambiguous and you can kind of based on what you're given of them you can kind of garner your own idea of where they come from and kind of how long they've been around. One thing I don't like about the vampires, though, they have they have a certain way of like commute or um, calling out for backup, as it were. And they kind of roar and they scream into the night, which was okay and that was fine. Um, but and they have like some mannerisms which are okay in some scenes. But there's one scene in particular um, where one of the vampires is looking around a house and he's kind of walking around. And he's kind of twitching like this and he's kind of like gliding and he's kind of like this and there's like he walks out the door like one time and he just kind of walks and he's just kind of like bam 90 degree angle and he just keeps walking it's just really weird really silly and they like even like when he's by himself he's kind of like walking around and he's like <sighs> like he's like hissing like an animal and i kind of get that's kind of what they were going for these more these creatures are more animalistic than your standard like vampire like being um civilized and cultured and high society like a typical vampire um but i just i thought a lot of it did get a little silly at certain times like i think there could have been a couple of times where they could have just kind of kept them a little more normal a little more natural but they really pushed for that over the top um element to the vampires but it's it just a tiny nitpick in my eyes is nothing that like really breaks the movie for me but yeah, i did i did see it, it did kind of take me out of like the engaging tense atmosphere when these things are kind of like kind of hovering around and they're and hissing like a cat or something but breaking that traditional vampire thing another thing that i do like is their teeth typically the vampires um it's just their canine teeth are a little bit longer and this is their whole mouth are just sharp it's just this mouthful of razors it look almost like sharks and their eyes are like fully dilated like a shark and i kind of like I said, it kind of goes in with that whole animalistic nature of the of the creatures, which I thought were uh, is another great addition to the whole um, element. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much all I've got in terms of like non spoiler stuff. Um, there's really not a lot to talk spoiler wise, um, but I'll get into a couple little details. Um, but yeah, I honestly recommend this film if you're a fan of vampires, if you're a fan of horror movies, or just claustrophobic thrillers. This is a great film to watch. Like I said at the beginning, you know, it's a hot summer day out there. Put it watching this movie, I'm like getting chills, watching the snow, and 
everybody's kind of like bundled up in coats and like they're kind of like hit you know they're bundled up and shivering in the attic and stuff and it just kind of like really added to that atmosphere plus you know the tension and the um the uh the nerve-wracking atmosphere of the movie itself also kind of helps to that so yeah if you're if you're feeling it's hot and you can kind of you're one of those people that can really engage in what's going on in a movie you can actually cool off in the middle of a hot summer day watching this um so yeah i highly recommend this film if you like those types of movies and um that's really all I got to say that's not spoiler-wise, so I'm just going to get into a couple of details, and, uh, yeah, if you're not up for watching those, well, thank you for watching, and, uh, stay tuned for some spoilers. So, yeah, like I said, there's really not much to talk spoiler-wise, um, there's a couple of things that I do want to touch upon. Um, this part I probably could have even left in the main part of the review, but, um, the initial attack of the vampires... Um, has this beautifully shot um, scene of chaos and carnage and horror. Um, the vampires attack, they're jumping out through windows, they're jumping on roofs, they're slaughtering people. And there's the, at the very end of the scene, it's very kind of like chaotic, you know, the cameras are shaking and stuff. Um, but there's this great moment that ends the, the, the scene. The camera just pans over the entire city, like an overhead shot of this little town. And you're seeing like people running around, you see somebody like has a shotgun, you see a flash go off, you see somebody else get hit. Um, you see people like sway, flailing their arms, hitting other people, blood sprays all over the white snow. Very good um, juxtaposition of like the... I think that's one of the things that really works is the whole like winter scene, you know, so you've got this like fresh white snow laid down and then you know people are getting hit or scratched or something and the blood just like flicking onto the onto the ground where so it really pops out it really stands out um that might be the inner gore hound in me talking but at the same time it does make for like it is very well done in terms of um, filmmaking um but just like this this overhead shot of all this carnage it's it's beautiful but at the same time it's horrific because obviously what's going on, but just in terms of cinematography and in terms of filmmaking, it's expertly done and I loved it. Another thing is, is it's really funny, um, throughout the opening of the film where we're being introduced to characters and we're kind of getting the setup for what's about to happen, um, there's a couple of things that kind of get brought up and you're kind of looking at it, it's like, that's, especially knowing how the film plays out, you're looking at it going, that's kind of foreshadowing what's going to happen, like, in terms of, like, dealing with vampires, because, um, there's a scene where Melissa George's character, who plays um, the ex-wife of Josh Hartnett's character, uh, something I actually need to bring up as well, um, she gets hit by um, one of those bulldozers that's got the giant uh, saw on it for like carving out, carving ice and breaking up ice and stuff. And, uh, you know, you, you immediately see this thing, you're like, if they don't use that against vampires, then that's wasted opportunity, so the, obviously they're going to be using that. And then there's another scene where um, Josh Hartnett's investigating and he goes to uh, the Utilidor um, and they're looking at this thing and it's this big pit and it's like a mulcher. So it's like these giant gears and blades just spinning and they like take a long, nice lingering shot over it. It's like, okay, again, if they don't use that against a vampire, wasted opportunity. And of course they do. Uh, but yeah, going back to the whole uh, ex-wife thing, that was something that I kind of... Again, this isn't really a spoiler, but I it is detailing and it does lead to a spoiler, so I guess I can leave it in this part. Um, but yeah, the, the the two leads, the female lead and the male lead, Josh Hartnett and Melissa George, um, they apparently have been married and now they they're on a separation period. And I do kind of like the fact that the you know they're able to kind of like put their differences aside to. Um, to work together to try and help the people, like, to try and help the remaining townsfolk. And, uh, I do like how they don't linger on that element a lot. It's there, and there's clearly that connection there, so when one of them is in trouble, the other one is, like, fearing for it, you can get that sense of realism out of that. But I don't, I like how they don't just, like, focus on that, and then you kind of forget that they're vampires, because every time they're working together, they're constantly bickering at each other. I liked that it was, it was very a very um, subtle addition to the whole story and helps 
flesh out those two characters. Especially, and this is the big spoiler, at the end, um, Josh Hartnett's character realizes that there's no other way to stop these things. Melissa George is pinned down under a, uh, under a vehicle, hiding. She's been there for, honestly, who knows. The vampires are burning down the town to cover any trace of them showing up and making it look like it was this huge accident. And uh, Josh Hartnett realizes that the only way that he can save her and stop the vampires is by becoming one. So he injects himself with um, the blood of somebody that was turning. He turns himself into a vampire. He has this big showdown with uh, Danny Houston's character, which is actually a pretty decent fight. Um, I remember being a little more intense than it actually is. Um, some of the editing to it is very um, choppy and a little chaotic. Um, but the final, the final blow that Hartnett gives to, to Houston, he lunges at Hartnett, Hartnett reaches his arm out and just punches him in the mouth, but his hand goes through his head, essentially, and he kind of, like, pulls part of his brain stem out, I think? And it's really, it's kind of awesome. Actually, it's very awesome. But it's really campy, and it's really silly, and it kind of um, takes away from some of the gritty realism of the film. And unfortunately, a lot of the violence gets a little overblown and a little um, over the top to the point where it's a little more comedic than it is serious, so it kind of takes you out of that moment. But uh, I am grateful that the whole movie isn't like that, because then we would have missed out on a lot of that, like, tension building. So yeah, the final shot of the movie is both very... It's a bittersweet ending, because you know that the villains have been defeated, but you've got your hero who is now infected with this vampirism and him and his now reconciled wife are sitting in front of the sunset and the or the sunrise and it comes up and he burns and turns to ashes as she holds him in his arm holds him in her arms and it, it's very depressing and it's very it's a very dark note to end the movie on despite the fact that like the sun is rising and it's this triumphant victory because they they managed to, to last but you know, not without sacrifice. So yeah, the fact that they ended on this really dark note, it's, like I said, it's very sad and it's very, like, a very somber way to, like, if, you know, if one saw this at the theater, you know, you're kind of, like, walking out with this, like, very sad feeling, you know, yeah, they, they survived, but he still died and it's very sad. Um, but there really was no other way for them to really end this film, like, without really, like, hinting that they were going to do, like, a sequel or something. Um, which I believe they do, and it's about Melissa George's character, like, seeking revenge against some vampire queen or something. I was looking at it on IMDb just after the movie ended. Um, I never saw it. I had no plan on seeing it. Um, but yeah, like, there was no way of doing, like, an epilogue where, like, you know, she drives off or whatever. Like, it just leaving it on that note is just kind of, like kind of leaves it ambiguous like where where could these characters go from here and you know we don't need a we don't need a film to follow that up so i do like that they ended it on the more bittersweet ending so that's it for 30 days a night i hope you enjoyed watching this as much as i enjoyed talking about it um highly recommend it again great vampire film definitely check it out um so yeah don't forget to uh like the video Leave a comment if you've already seen the film and what your thoughts on it are. And uh, also, you know, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever your form of social media is. And also, don't forget to subscribe if you yourself are jonesing for film.